Hey y'all, it's Dr. Taylor. And this is just a quick video on how to create multi-question summary charts. And so this is for when you have data, like maybe you have a Likert or interval um, scale where you have asked someone to agree or disagree with the following statements and they can strongly agree or strongly disagree, and maybe you have three, four, five, sometimes 10 statements that they have to answer. And rather than providing a summary of um, all the frequencies of the, of the strongly disagree to strongly agree for each question, instead you can do like a top box analysis or a top two box analysis. Uh, to be able to summarize it on all those questions on one chart. And let me show you what that means. It's easier to, to show you and I'll show you how to do it. So first we're going to go um, into, let me share this. I'm gonna show you what the example is. And so with this particular example, this is a Harris poll. Uh, survey and this is done for the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption and for our class we have adopted adapted this question for our particular client that we're working with in this class and so we've asked the question in general do you think children uh, ad adopted through foster I'm sorry, we changed this and said, in general, do you think foster children are less likely equally or more likely than other children to have? And then uh, we have these, each of these um, perceptions of problems, which are problems with trust and bonding, problems with behavior and self-control, problems with school or learning, and problems with physical health and disability. And then their survey response answers were less equally or less likely, equally likely, or more likely than other children to have these issues. Um, so with this particular survey, they have private infant adoption, foster care system adoption, and international adoption. So they compare the three different types. For the data that we collected for our class, we've only collected you know, the one, the foster care. Um, and so we wanna be able to more easily summarize this data and be able to compare it. So we're gonna create a horizontal bar chart, one that goes this way, lists each of, each of those four problems, and then shows how many people, what percentage of people said more likely. So let me show you how to do that. I guess it's easier said, it's easier done than said. All right, so I have an Excel file, and let me stop this and go into the Excel file. So I'm gonna share a screen. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to copy that. So let me go over here real quick. Um, and what I've done is I've copied the uh, frequency charts from SPSS and simply put them into my Excel file. And so what I have here, and I'm only going to show it for two out of the four. There's actually four questions for this one. I'm going to show it to you for two, and then you'll, after I show you the two, you'll be able to figure out how to do the rest. But so you have this data, and you have it on individual sheets just to make it easier. And the first thing you need to do is to create a new worksheet. Uh, so I've already created that. I have this worksheet. And um, at the top of this worksheet, I want to have two columns. I want to have a column that is the perceptions and a column that a column that is percent say more likely. Okay, so I have these two columns. And so this perception is, let's see, problems with trust and bonding. So I'm just gonna copy that, bring it over here. And copying and pasting is the best way. It just reduces errors in the long run. You only need the actual perception, not the entire question. So you'll put that there. And I'm just gonna open this up a little bit more to make it neater. And then you want the percentage of more likely. Uh, so you want this, um, this percentage right here. And these are the same. However, if, 
if you had uh, different, if you had uh, missing values, then the percent invalid valid percent would then become two different percents. But we don't have that issue, so we can use either one of them. But the problems with trust and bonding is 78.4. <coughs> So I'm going to go and clean that up. I want it to go out one decimal place. And then the second one is And then you just do the same with the others, list them down. And then what you're going to do is you're going to highlight it, go to insert, go to chart. And we want a horizontal chart. And they have different types of charts, but this one is the 2D, that's what we want for that. And so we want data labels. I'm gonna right click it. Add data labels. Get rid of the clearance. There we go. Now line. And we don't need this. remember exactly how to get rid of these. Um, mm -hmm. This is not what I wanted to happen. Okay, so I just hit delete on those. I highlighted them and deleted them. And then I want it to look similar. And this is really about the potential So this is the potential for problems with foster children. And then one other thing I would want to do real quick is highlight that, go to data, uh, sort the data. My data has headers. I want to do it like that. And I want to do it from largest to smallest. Okay, and it should have switched it on the chart. Let's go to smallest to largest. There we go. And so put the largest on top and the smallest, and you just want it to go from smallest to largest so that very quickly the, uh, the client or the reader of the report can see that the potential for problems with the foster children, the largest problem is um, perceived problems with trust and bonding with the child and problems with behavior and self-control. And so again, you would do this by going down, adding the rest of the questions that you had there, and you would be able to create this chart. And this chart can then be added into um, your final report. So that's it for creating um, these single item um, summary charts. Now, 
our scale, as you remember, was less likely, equally likely, more likely. When we get into Likert scales, and I'll go into this in another video where we have a, a bigger scale, where we have like five points or seven points, then we can do something called a top box analysis where we take the two, so it would be um, strongly disagree to strongly agree, and so it's strongly disagree, somewhat disagree, neutral or neither, um, then somewhat agree, strongly agree. We can take those two agrees, the strongly agree and somewhat agree, and then we can merge them and add them together to um, come up with a percentage that then is what's called a top box analysis. So I uh, will show you how to do that in the next video, but for now, this uh, concludes our little video on how to create a summary chart. Please let me know if you have any questions. And other than that, I hope you have a great day.